Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, guys. I'm Exa, and welcome back to my channel. I've been saying for years how I wanted to make my own pair of shoes. So this year I decided, you know what? I'm finally going to do it. So I thought before I adventure into making my own pair of heels, because that does require a little more skill and effort, I think, um, because of the shape of the heels and getting it to balance and sit right and make sure you're not going to like bend your heel in the middle. So the first pair of shoes that I am going to try and make is actually a pair of ankle boots for motorcycle riding for my mom. And I am going to give them to her for Christmas this year, hence the theme of this video. Well, I'm a little bit scared, but here we go. I'm going to try to make my very own pair of leather ankle boots from scratch. Alright guys, so first we're going to go over all of the materials I'm going to need for this project. Hopefully I have everything, so if not, I will add it in later, I guess. So first, ignoring the fact that my ottoman is a mess, we're going to go over the leathers. Um, so first, this is the upper leather. It's like a thicker cowhide leather. So we're going to be using him for the fronts of the boots. And then this is my nice thick um, sole leather. It's just like a veg tanned one. So we're going to use that. And then this is a thin lining leather, which I haven't decided if I'm going to try to line these boots or just not because they are boots and not heels. And you're going to wear socks with them. Um, so you don't really need a liner, but we'll see. And moving on with the leather, so this one's actually still in the plastic. Um, but as you can see, it's this really pretty uh, textured leather, so we're going to be using that for the backs of the heels just to give them a little bit of, or the backs of the boots, just to give them a little bit of fun. And these are last for another project, so stay tuned. I will be making a pair of heels. Not yet. So moving on, we have the last for these boots that I got. Um, so they're, you know, pretty flat, almond toe shape. Thankfully, my mom and I are the same size, so I can use this for myself in the future, too. And up next, I have a whole bunch of this thin um, cardboard, um, like, particle board stuff, which also goes in the insoles of the shoes on the inside to just help strengthen them. Obviously, I don't need this many sheets, but it was like 10 bucks for a giant pack, so I'll never need to buy any again. Alright, so... Up next in my box of goodies, um, I have lots of threads, which I'm actually not going to use any of these threads, um, but they just kind of came in a kit with some stuff. Um, so these guys are for pressing, these guys are for pressing holes in them for stitching. Um, this is a little, this is a tool you can use to make little channels um, and kind of thin out spots like for stitching. So, probably use him. Again, told you I was making heels in another project. Um, so next, these are steel shanks that go on the inside of the shoe to help reinforce it and keep its shape. Um, they are kind of bendable, but so those will go on the inside layers. These are some handy dandy cute little snipper scissor things. Here's some needles for hand sewing. We're using hot pink thread because my mom wanted some fun, crazy pink accents, which means we're also going to need some hot pink zippers. A couple awls, pokey tools for making holes in things. Uh, this is a little shear guy for thinning out the edges of leather. You kind of go like this across it. Um, I'll show you that. And then we are going to try to do some stitching on the machine. So I got a presser foot um, that's supposed to be good for leather to convert my regular machine into leather. I did get some special um, leather needles as well, which are already on my machine, so I don't have a, those right now. We have some all-purpose all cement glue, which is going to help us um, just, it's going to help us adhere all of the different layers together. Um, and then we are going to do some stitching for extra reinforcement. Okay guys, so to get started with patterning, we are going to be taking some packing tape and completely covering our shoe last in them. Um, I'm sorry, this is painter's tape, not packing tape, but you get the point. 
Anyway, I'm covering it in this tape um, on the whole thing, and then we're going to cut apart to get our um, the size we need for our pieces. And I'm using the tape, shh, Callie. Sorry, my dog's wandering around. Anyway, um, I'm using the tape uh, instead of just trying to use paper right away because it does uh, shape to the shoe much easier and then we can kind of flatten it back out to make a paper pattern from. Um, I found this is probably the easiest way to do this from all of the other shoemaking videos that I've watched to kind of figure out what I'm getting myself into. So that is what I'm going to do as well. And you do want to make sure that you're overlapping the layers of tape enough so that way when you pull them off, they'll come off in one big piece. Um, you obviously don't want them to split apart and come off in sections because then when you go to transfer them to paper to make a pattern, it might end up being the wrong size. All right, so now I have both um, shoes covered to make a pattern, which in hindsight, I did think I really only need to make one pattern for one shoe and then flip it over and use the opposite side to make the other shoe um, because they are the same size. But if you do have weird uh, shoe lasts that are different between your two feet, like maybe one of your feet's wider than the other one or whatever, then you would want to make separate patterns for each shoe or if you're going to like uh, do the whole asymmetric style and cut them in different places, again, do one for each shoe. Um, so I'm just taking my Sharpie and kind of drawing across where I'm going to cut the different pattern pieces apart. Um, so as you see, I just made vertical lines down both sides of the shoe because that back piece is going to be that fun uh, embossed leather pattern and then the front's just going to be a solid black leather. So once I do that, I'm just kind of uh, going to trace around the bottom edge as well of where the... Um, you know, the bottom of the uppers are going to end and the leather soles will start. Don't worry about trying to make extra space for um, the seam allowances and being able to stretch them over and stuff because when we make the paper patterns, we will account for it at that point. All right, so now I'm just gonna take um, my little knife there and cut apart on all of those pieces, seams that I want. Um, if you're making shoes with more pieces, obviously you have more cutting to do. I decided to go with a really simple pattern um, since this is my first pair, but you know, do whatever you want. Go big or go home. Um, so here I'm just tracing around that bottom edge as well, just to make these pieces. And when I'm done, I'm just gonna have two pattern pieces. Obviously, if you have more pieces um, and components going into your shoes, you will have more pattern pieces than I do. Also, don't worry if you um, do have some little tears and stuff on the edges of your piece. Um, it doesn't need to be super perfect because we are going to be transferring this to paper so you can just kind of manually look at and trace um, the spots where you goofed like right here where it kind of like didn't want to tear properly and I have this now little ugly notch spot when I go to transfer this to paper I'll just trace through that and make it look nice and pretty so when I cut my leather it won't have any weird crappy edges So then you can go ahead and flatten those out and stick it right on your piece of paper that you're going to make your pattern with. And again, just trace it out. Um, so here's where I made adjustments um, 
for those weird funky edges on the bottom, and when I cut them out, I'll make it nice and even. So once you have your pattern traced out, you don't need the tape anymore. You are done with that and you can throw it out. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and cut out that pattern piece. So here's where I'm making a little bit of seam allowance um, space. And then also when you transfer it to the leather, you can make a little bit more. Um, obviously it's better to have a little bit too much extra that you need to trim off than to not have enough and you know waste a whole piece of leather because it's too small. So there's one and we can repeat that for the toes. Alright, so since these are flat boots um, for this sole piece, um, I did just trace the shoe out flat on the ground, but if you're working with a heel or something that's got kind of an arch angle, obviously you can't just lay it flat and trace around it. You're going to want to do the tape method again um, for that piece as well. So first I'm going to cut out the bottom sole pattern pieces on my cardboard. So there's for the right shoe and then we're going to flip our pattern over to the other way to um, do the other sole. Which I guess for this doesn't matter because it's cardboard and it's um, obviously the two sides are the same. But we want to make sure that we're making, um, doing the opposite patterns for the two shoes when we get to working with our like upper leathers and sole leathers and stuff. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut out my leather pieces. So remember, like I said, we're going to do one facing this way and one facing this way, so they're opposite. And we do want to trace them on the back because I am going to use a um, kind of colored Sharpie. So we can put him out and we can trace him around. And remember, I do want to leave some seam allowance on these sides here, probably a little bit like that. Um, so that way we can attach in our zippers and do the seaming uh, correctly. And we're also going to leave some at the bottom so that way we can fold it over um, and kind of tuck it in. Which yes I probably should have just made a pattern that was bigger like that but um, you know whatever. So then we're going to cut that out and flip him over and put him on top of our other material so that way we can copy this piece to make an identical one for the other shoe that is facing the other direction. Although this piece does look like it's symmetrical, it's actually not. So I do want to make sure that I'm making one facing each direction. And we'll do the same thing with our toe pieces. Again, we want to leave a little extra so that way we can stretch it um, around where we want it. But we can go ahead and line them both up and make sure um, they're going to where the seams are going to be. So as you can see, there's a little bit of overlap on both sides. So I'm going to stitch a side with a zipper in first, which is gonna be the outside edge um, on this side. And then we will fit it to here and then adjust to the other side because that one's gonna be more easy to change. So now when you look at our zipper, you're gonna see there's some nice even edges.